Have you ever been in a relationship that was so toxic that it literally destroyed your running, your confidence, your self-worth? Look, you're not alone. I've been there and it sucks. It's terrible and it's not easy to overcome. But let me tell you a story about how I was able to get rid of the nastiest narcissist I've ever had in my life and how you can do it too. When I was training for my second marathon, I had a friendship that was so toxic and so hurtful. I felt like I was a prisoner and I couldn't get away. I couldn't get out of it. And it just, it even sucks even just talking about it all these years later. Over the last four years, life has taught me a lot of things. And one of them is getting rid of the relationships that are so toxic, that's holding you back from the life that you want and the running fitness you want to achieve. Look, it can permeate every part of your life. So I'm gonna tell you this little story. My wife and a number of my friends tell me that I'm a very empathetic person, a very kind soul, and sometimes I'm just too welcoming to people that I don't know. And that puts me at exposure to narcissists. Here's the thing with narcissistic behavior. Being a friend to a narcissist is absolutely exhausting and they literally beat you down into submission. Otherwise, it is a full on argument, a fight, and all you're trying to do is kind of protect you as a person. I didn't really understand what narcissism was. I didn't even know that that was a name like many years ago. So when this person came into my life, I had no filter. I, I, I've, I had no experience with somebody like that. And so I, I didn't know what I was getting involved in. I wrote a few notes down. So to be categorized as a narcissist, you need to fall into five of these categories. One, has a grandiose sense of self-importance, i.e. exaggerates achievements, aspects to be recognized as superior without actually completing the achievement. Next one, is preoccupied with fantasies of success, power, brilliance, beauty, or perfect love. Believes that they are special and can only be understood by or should associate with other special people. Requires extensive admiration, right? Everyone's gotta love the person. They are the best. Has a sense of entitlement, such as an unreasonable expectation of favorable treatment or compliance with his or her expectations. Yeah, that was a big one. Is explosive and takes advantage of others to achieve their own ends. Ho oh, oh, ho, hell yeah, I know a number of people with that one. Lacks empathy and is unwilling to identify with the needs of others. Okay, so there's very few of those people that I've had to deal with is often envious of others or believes that others are envious of them. Shows arrogant, haunting behaviors and attitudes, but they honestly believe that they are way better than anybody, right? But the thing is, is inside, they are so insecure, right? so insecure. That they have to have this belief about them. And I don't know, how they come to see that, but it may have to do either you're born like this or it has something to do with your uh, environment, like your childhood, right? It may have something to do with how you've been raised. Now there does need to be a diagnosis for this type of thing. So you, they may have a personal personality disorder, right? Um, unfortunately, there is no treatment right? It's because of its inherent complexities. Narcissism is not easily treated and studies have shown mixed results from a variety of treatments and approaches. Many people with narcissism, they also don't attempt ther therapy to begin with. Even if they do, they don't stick with it. For example, someone may has a sense of self-entitlement and self-importance and lacks empathy. They probably don't think that there's anything amiss, that there isn't anything amiss that therapy can help with. Narcissistic people often don't show up to therapy unless something is going wrong in their lives and they want to fix the problem instead of addressing their issues. 
they are very resistant to change. So the bottom line is if someone you're close with seems to have narcissistic tendencies, try not to take it personally because the person is likely treating other people the same way that they're treating you. And fortunately, these negative behaviors have deep seated roots and are very difficult to change. And they are deeply insecure folks who have very little self reflection capacity, who often do not take note of how they are hurting people. If you are sticking it out in a relationship on the hope that they will change, it may be a very long ride and it may never happen. Over a decade, guys, over a decade. I honestly don't go around trying to find these types of people. Somehow they find me. It was a slow grind. Like it didn't just happen overnight. Like they kind of reel you in, you know, take you out to, for a bite to eat for lunch. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, you get next one. But then you go out to lunch again and you're going to go pay. And they're like, I don't know, I'll get it, I'll get it. And before you know it, like they're like, you know, it's all this victim, like, I always have to pay, blah, blah, blah. You should, you know, respect me. And, you know, I do everything for you. And, uh, you know, you know what? I own you, man. Like, you you do what I tell you to do and blah, 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 blah. And, like, not in those words, per se, but in the action, the meaning behind it. It, 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 it sucked. It, my running took a hit big time, but my mental health took a hit in ways I never thought it would take a hit. And I was in, I was battling. I was like trying to survive. My friendships were being ripped apart from this person. Uh, my businesses were like starting to implode. Uh, my uh, marriage was faltering and my relationship with my daughter was very strained. These things were all happening because of one person and I didn't see it at the time. And then I woke up and I took action because if I didn't, I don't know what would have happened. I think I probably would have lost it all. This morning, we're at a trail that I love to come to and I haven't been here for way too long. I, the summer's gone and here we are in the fall. So it's time to put in some miles on the trail. Making this video is extremely hard. I tried to put this all in the past, but sometimes life has a way of surfacing things that need to be dealt with. And this is one of those things. As much as it's beautiful out here, this place brings me a lot of peace. It allows me to reflect on what's happened to me over the years and how I kind of got into these crazy situations. There's something about being on top of like the tallest kind of peak in the area. This is Ontario, it's not really, we don't have mountains, but this is, this is all I got. But what I got is pretty beautiful. I'll tell you that. All right, time to get back down to the river. If you find yourself in a position of being affected by a narcissist, just know that you can get away from that person. You don't need to be with that person. You just need to find your own safe space. The bottom of the Boyne Valley is like literally my favorite place. I love hanging out down here. Just being close to the water. Now it's like straight up. I call it the grind. This is the grind. Well, one little portion of it. I have a love-hate relationship to this section. Man, there's a lot of trees down. I think wow. the extremely important thing to do when you find yourself in the transition of trying to get away from a narcissist is cutting all ties. Over the last four years, I've been working my way back and building my soul back because I lost it. I lost myself years ago and being on the trail just humbles me brings me back to nature and i'm just trying to heal the scars heal the pain that i've gone through all of those years ago doing a lot of meditating therapy 
Oh, coming back bigger, stronger, and better. So how do you deal with a narcissist? Yeah, if I can just get block it, so. them on Facebook, block them on Instagram, block them on everything social, and then block their phone number. Because I can tell you this, when I did all of those things, my anxiety started to lift. Yeah, there was a lot of damage that was done, but this was the first step. And I knew that I would be okay. It was just gonna take time. I also needed to make sure that I never ran into this person again, because I'll tell you, if that happened, I'm not too sure how it would go. But thankfully, I've avoided this person for the last four years. So let's just make it one more. So years ago, this guy comes along, somehow becomes a friend of mine. I'm not gonna name anybody just in case, but let's just say that this person was very grandiose. So bigger than life. This person was like, always had to be right, always needed validation, always needed the biggest and best things. And he always had to get the last word. There was always gaslighting involved, always victim blaming. There was all of these things that the writing was on the wall, but I just couldn't see it. I couldn't acknowledge that I had allowed somebody in my life that was systematically ripping me apart. Whenever we had a conversation, it would always spiral into a downright fight if he didn't get the last word and he had to be right and you had to agree with that person. Otherwise, it, they would never let go of it. It was this constant in your face type of thing. And they would say condescending things like, I own you and you know, stuff like just stupid, like who does that? right? Like just really crazy things. And they would kind of say it in a joking way, but you know, it would just be so soul crushing in so many ways. And so, you know, over the years, I became a smaller version of myself. My business life started to suffer from this person. Now they wanted to do things for me, right? take me out for lunch, take me over here, there, everywhere, and just become like this best friend of whatever. And the more that I allowed that to happen, because the more that I said no, the more fights, the more pushback, the more, I, I, I didn't know how to get out of it, to be quite honest. In my head, I was just dying. I just, I couldn't do it. It was so exhausting being around somebody that would suck the life out of you. Like, there was this one time where they would wanna go somewhere, but they couldn't be alone with their own thoughts. So I needed to be there. And then, you know, once I was like captive for the day, like, you know, it, it was all on their terms, all on their time. Everything was about them, right? And if they were wrong on something, he would blame everybody else and want apologies from everybody and, you know, to make him look like the king. And it was so, like, I looked around at, at other people and how they saw this individual and they were like, why are you even with this person? And I was like, ah, they're just joking around, blah, blah, blah. But no, they were not joking around. This was serious and it perpetuated year after year after year. I got sucked into doing things I didn't want to do. And then I ended up going away with them. And as we traveled, there was instances where there was victim blaming, there was shaming, there was like, you owe me and all these things like I'm looking after you and I'm I'm your best friend and it's like that I allowed it to happen and it just kept going down this road and then when it came to my you know me wanting to run a marathon all of a sudden that person wanted to run a marathon 
So then I would go out and try to do my run and they would like totally sabotage it by like, no, 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 you need to run here and you need to do this and this is how we're gonna do it. Or we're gonna go over here, we're gonna do this run and we'll make it an epic adventure and all this stuff. And I was like, in my head, I'm like, no, I don't wanna do that. Like I have my training plan that I wanna focus on and that's all I wanna do. But I was crushed down so far and in some cases, I was like far away from home in their vehicle. And I had no way out really. And this perpetuated and it was not a good experience. And the person really infiltrated my training even more. And I hated it. I hated every minute of it. And then the longer this happened and the more that it, you know, continued to happen, the more I was losing a bit of myself every single day. And I didn't know how to get out of it. And it wasn't until 2020 where I saw a glimmer of hope and I'm like, oh, okay, this, this could be a good thing. And I, the person was away from me, uh, you know, like living distance was away from me there was less interaction. There was less of, it was, it was, it was good. I, and I was happy with that. And then I, you know, I worked at becoming stronger. I worked at overcoming the challenges of dealing with this. And I decided that I was going to be a little stealth. First off, I would never try to get the last word in. I wouldn't try to defend. I just, I just took it and said, okay, whatever. And diffused any situation that may rise. So that was number, that was the first thing I did to deal with dealing with a narcissist. The second thing I dealt with was trying to be very stealth. So them sending me a text message or something like that. I wouldn't really reply or if I saw the person I just really wouldn't have much of an interaction with them it was more just kind of sticking to myself being a little quiet just trying to skirt around the situation but become very stealth become very small and just kind of slowly disappear into the background and hoping that they would latch on to somebody else because I didn't want any part of this person in my life anymore. And I saw so many examples of how they treated their family, how they were treating other friends. And I thought, you know what? No, you're like a vampire, always going for your, like the next blood. And I, I pity the people who are around that. But the thing is, is you can't argue with a narcissist. They, they just don't have any empathy. Like they don't care. It's all about themselves, but they did so much damage. You know, they even wanted me to look like them, right? Dress like them. And I'm like, what? No, you know, this is, it's heart wrenching even to talk about this, but you know, that is, no, I couldn't do it anymore. So yeah, trying to like when, when 2020 came, it was a different story. I decided I'd stand up and say, nope, this ain't happening anymore. And that was the end of it. And then they kind of come crawling back, you know, I'm sorry, blah, 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 trying to reel you back in. And I'm like, nope. And I tell you all of this because if you have one of these people in your life, you may have a parent who's like that. You may have a child that's like that. You may have a spouse or, or son or daughter. Like, honestly, it is so hard. And I really encourage anybody who's in a situation like that, that you don't feel safe, that people treat you awful and you feel like next to nothing. And that's not right, right? People should be lifting you up. People should be able to, to be inspiring to help you, right? Not crush you. Like, I just, my heart just goes out to people, man, in that situation. And some of them, 
they can't get out of it. Like they really don't, like they are so stuck. They don't know how. And that may be a financial thing, but may not. But I know a number of females who are in a situation like that and males who are in a situation like that and they don't know which way to turn. And just when they think that they can get their claw, get the claws out of them, come, they come back. And so now I just work at trying to be the better version. That's why I say I'm always trying to be a better version of myself because there's been times in my life that I wasn't. And I was just learning as I went. And people came into my life and I didn't know how to, you know, get away from them. And it took a long time, over a decade. But I did it and I'm better for it. And it's been an amazing four years. And I just feel like I'm just getting started. Things are in a very good place. And I'm, I'm proud of who I am. I'm proud of what I've been able to go through and, and learn and overcome. And, uh, you know, if I was to tell, you know, that little, my little self, I would literally just say, look, you're better than this. You don't deserve this. Go out and get what you want. Don't settle for the crap that you're going through. It's only a chapter in your life and you can overcome this. Right? Your actions speak louder than words. And when you take action, the world moves itself to align with that. And you will achieve what it is that you desire. You just have to be willing to take the first step. And it can be hard, I know. But it can be done. A narcissist can literally ruin your dreams. They can steal them, take them away, so you'll never have them. That's why I'm always trying to protect what's important to myself. Because if I allow others to come into my life and cause chaos and rip me apart and just take away all those things that I, I ever wanted, I mean, that's on me because I'm allowing it to happen. But sometimes you don't really realize it. And then you can put yourself down and then say, oh, that was me. It's all my fault. And you can get into that kind of situation. And that's not good either. You just got to get out of it. Get out of Dodge. Because they're terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible relationships to have. I am so lost. I am so lost. No idea. Oh, wait a second. That's going to loop. That's going to loop again. Yeah, it's been a while since I've been here. I just want to get back. Okay. Oh, wow. I am nowhere near where I thought I was. Go check out the community. Awesome would it be to just pull up in your boat right to your condo? That'd be awesome. I gotta get back over there. Ah, oh, this is so cool though. This is such an amazing place because if you're a boat person, you want to be on the water and you're a trail runner and you want to be in the trails, man, you got both of them here at Friday Harbor. And it's flipping awesome. Like, I love both of those things. However, I'm not into like the condo kind of lifestyle. But then again, there is something to be said for that. Because I don't have to cut the lawn or do any kind of maintenance outside. Everything's kind of looked after. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's 
it's kind of a neat place to come. I like Friday Harbor. And the trails, yeah, you can kind of get lost in there. I literally went in there, I was just filming. I kind of wasn't paying attention to where I was going. And before you know it, I was like, literally got turned around. It's closed. It's closed. Oh, I wanted to have something to eat, something healthy. See, that's the problem when I run here. A lot of these stores have like weird hours because, you know, people are at work. Oh, I could go in for a pastry and a coffee or I could get some, no, I'm not getting any of this. Uh, I'll go somewhere healthy. <laughs> I could go for some mini donuts. Ah, uh, they're closed anyways. <laughs> Uh, one word for everybody who may be in a relationship with a narcissist and that is get out and run fast see you on the next one